So this, um, this lecture is about orographic lifting, which is the process of um, topography taking parcels at a lower elevation and raising them to a higher elevation. And we're going to take a perspective of um, looking at a parcel that, that we know something about in Boise and taking it for a ride up to Bocas Basin and asking ourselves what happens to that parcel of air along the way. So in our last lecture, um, we, we investigated a little air parcel in Boise, right? We had that lecture about um, how relative humidity can be a little bit misleading because it doesn't tell us um, everything we would like to know about an air parcel. And we started off with some known and measured characteristics of the air uh, at, a, at Boise. Um, and the, the characteristics we had were that the air temperature was about 8.9 degrees Celsius. I think that was about 48 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. That was on uh, uh, February 1st, so it was a pretty warm February day. Uh, the relative humidity of, of the air was 39%, and the air pressure worked out to about 101.6 kilopascals. Okay, so we went through the process in that lecture of calculating a number of different things. In principle, we were trying to get a measure of specific humidity, an actual measure of the, the mass of water in every kilogram of air, and we found that through a series of calculations. And along the way, we computed two things that are going to be of interest to us in this lecture here. So we calculated the saturation vapor pressure. That is the pressure that um, the air would be, uh, the, the water vapor in the air would be exerting on that air if the relative humidity is, is 100%. And we found that number to be 1.14 kilopascals. And we converted this temperature and this relative humidity to get an actual vapor pressure of 0.44 kilopascals. Okay, so we're going to be using, in particular, this quantity here, this actual vapor pressure of 0.44 kilopascals, and we'll explain why on the next slide. Okay, here's our setup. Okay, so we are starting down here in Boise. We have those air condition, um, the, those meteorologic conditions outside in the air that we saw on the first slide. We're basically going to uh, really quickly enclose, you can think of it as like a meter cube in uh, clear Lexan, and we're going to take us uh, take it along with us up to go skiing up at Bogus, okay? And so just to review what the characteristics were down at this, um, of our pixel down in Boise, the saturation vapor pressure again was 1.14 kilopascals that we computed in the previous class. The actual vapor pressure was 0.44 kilopascals, and the air temperature was 8.9 degrees Celsius. Uh, for reference here, we're going to need this. Uh, the elevation uh, down in Boise is 832.1 meters. OK, so I think we all probably have some kind of intuitive understanding that um, the air up in the mountains is, is uh, colder. And so we would expect that if we take our little parcel here along for um, the, a ride uh, up to Bogus Basin, that it would cool along the way. So let's do exactly that, okay? So we're going to, to drive up Bogus Basin Road. Uh, we're going to pass Hawkins Packout along the way. Maybe we'll pick something up at Mocha Moose. We got to open our doors over that cattle guard for the troll. And ultimately, why we wind up at the base area of of Bogus Basin, which is at an elevation of 1,765 meters. And if we want to sort of check in with our parcel friend, uh, once we get to the base area, let's go back and look at these three quantities and see what we know and see what we don't know. Okay, so um, 
let's start off at the bottom here, actually. So we don't know what the temperature is. Uh, we have an in intuitive sense that it's going to be cooler, but how much cooler is it going to be? How much cooler is it up at Bogus Basin relative to Boise uh, under average conditions? Okay, not during an inversion, but um, on, on an average day, how much cooler up up at Bogus Basin is it than down in town? Okay, as I mentioned, um, we made the assumption that we packed that meter cubed of air into Lexan and to clear Lexan. And so the the actual vapor pressure, right, so that uh, that specific humidity, that, that amount of water in that parcel is, is, I'm going to make the claim, not going to change. Okay, so we, we don't have any, but the way that we constructed this system as a, as a box of clear plastic containing our air that we scooped up from Boise, um, there, there are not any mechanisms for the water vapor to leave that, that parcel of air, okay? Um, we'll, we might modify that depending on where our calculations go, and we'll discuss that. That's actually sort of part of one of the things we're trying to, to get at. Um, but for now, let's assume that um, that vapor pressure um, does not change. Okay, so that's, that's a key assumption here, and we're, we're going to have to come back and check it. Okay. Um, finally, the saturation vapor pressure. Okay, we need, we need to know the saturation vapor if we're ultimately going to figure out how humid our little parcel is now up at Bogus Basin, uh, but we, we need to know the air temperature to know that saturation vapor pressure through that equation that was called the Clausius-Clapeyron equation that we're going to use again in this lecture. Um, we need to know that air temperature in order to get that saturation vapor pressure. Okay, okay. so let's proceed to ask. Um, a, a good strategy might be to figure out first what this air temperature is up at Bogus Basin and then proceed to use that Clausius-Clapeyron relationship to get the saturation vapor pressure, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to do. But um, the key thing that we need to do first is we need to introduce a very important concept called the dry adiabatic lapse rate, okay? That's a mouthful. But what, what the dry adiabatic lapse rate is, is that it tells us that as an air parcel is raised adiabatically, so that means slowly so that no work is done, okay, um, as we raise that into the atmosphere, and it's a closed system, so it can exchange energy, um, but it can exchange mass, so that's where our, that's where our assumption of, of the, the vapor pressure staying constant comes from. Um, but it can't do any work, okay? So we can only do things very slowly and we can't gain or lose mass into that air parcel. So the adiabatic lapse rate says that as you move that parcel from one elevation to another elevation, um, it will cool at a constant rate of about 9.8 degrees Celsius per every 1,000 meters, okay? And we can actually derive that number. You can derive what that adiabatic lapse rate is, knowing how the pressure varies in the atmosphere. We're not going to do that. That's for like a meteorology class. Um, but this is actually a pretty helpful, uh, a helpful finding because we can actually pretty straightforwardly get at what the, what the temperature is up at Bogus Basin. Okay, so um, so if if this value, our our change in temperature over a change in elevation is equal to a constant, is equal to minus nine point eight degrees Celsius per one thousand meters, um, what would we expect the temperature um, at Bogus Basin to be at the base area, given that our measured temperature in Boise was eight point nine degrees Celsius? Okay, so let's show here again um, a reminder here that. Um, down in the lower left-hand corner here, we have the, the elevation at, at Boise of 832.1 meters. Um, the elevation at the Bogus base area is 1,765. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and actually calculate what we might expect that, um, that temperature to be. Okay, so, um, all right, so if we do this delta T, let me change my pen color. So I'll just write over this delta T. So if my delta temperature over 
delta z. This delta just means change, okay? And this is a this is a slope, right? So this is just a rise over a run. So a rise in temperature over a run in elevation. So we can express this a little bit differently. We can say that this is our temperature at some location two minus our temperature at some location one divided by our elevation at that location two minus our elevation at that location one. And um, the adiabatics lapse rate says that that should be equal to minus 9.8 degrees Celsius per 1,000 meters, okay. All right, so I'm gonna substitute in some numbers here. We're gonna say that location two is up at Bogus Basin and location uh, one is down here in Boise, okay? So um, we know this number here, right? We know the elevation up at Bogus. We know the elevation in Boise. And then we knew the temperature of that air parcel down in Boise. So all we have to do is solve this equation um, for T2, the temperature at Bogus Basin, okay? And if I do my math, um, quickly, I, I will get something like uh, my temperature at, at Bogus Basin is equal to my temperature in Boise plus minus 9.8. And the minus sign here indicates we're cooling as we're going up in elevation. And I'm going to multiply this by Z2 minus Z1. So this is uh, 1,765 minus 832.1 meters. This is meters, right? So these meters cancel out. Uh, this is our 8.9. So if I keep following this, this is 8.9 degrees Celsius uh, minus 9.8 over 1,000 degrees Celsius times. And let's bring the calculator in here. Okay, so. Clear this out. Okay, 1765 minus 832.1 is equal to 932.9. 932.9. Okay, all right, so let's do this math and we will get um, the temperature at Bogus Basin is equal to, okay, so, um, so we'll do uh, 9.8, actually let's do, yeah, let's do 9.8 uh, over a thousand, okay, times, 932.9, okay? And um, this is actually going to be uh, a negative, right? So the, the minus sign is out here. We're gonna add to that 8.9 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna add 8.9, okay? So if we do that, we get a temperature of minus 0.24 degrees Celsius, okay? So this is minus 0 0.24 degrees Celsius. That's what we would expect under dry adiabatic, adiabatic lapse rate conditions. Okay. All right, so is, is this any good, right? Like, is that is that accurate? Is it that simple? Um, so I actually, um, I pulled up what the air temperature is at Bogus Basin. Um, I'm making this lecture 
you know, roughly an hour after I made the previous one. So the air temperature hasn't changed too much. And in fact, when we do this in degrees uh, Celsius, right? So right here, we have an air temperature of uh, one degree Celsius um, up at Bogus Basin. Okay, so uh, it's a little bit warmer there than our dry adiabatics lap dry adiabatic lapse rate predicts, but that's pretty good, right? Like that's not that far off um, relative, to, relative to, you know, how inaccurate it could be, right? So this is actually a pretty good approximation, right? And that's, um, if you look at this as well, uh, most people will subtract something like 10 degrees Celsius um, from the temperature in Boise to, to get what the temperature at Bogus Basin is. It's basically because Bogus Basin is about a thousand meters 3,000 feet or so above the elevation in Boise, right? So that that checks out. It, that makes sense why that would be a good approximation. Okay. So now we've filled in one of those uh, one of those unknowns in our in our set of equation for our parcel now, right? So um, for our parcel now, we still have this uh, um, e um, this vapor pressure the actual vapor pressure of 0.44 kilopascals um, and now we filled in the the air temperature as being minus 0.24 degrees celsius okay um, and so now the question is is how do we get um, this saturation vapor pressure because what we'd like to do is now actually ask well what's the relative humidity of our air parcel now that we've brought it up to bogus basin so how do we get that okay coming back we're going to recall let me get rid of my pen marks here just so I can show this right here's what here's what our three really important equations are that tell us the state of our air parcel, right? The Clausius-Clapeyron, the ideal gas law, the relative humidity equation. Okay, so what do we have here in terms of what's known? Well, we, we know this air temperature here, right? Um, so we can get E sat. We know what our actual vapor pressure is, right? Um, so that's that 0.44 kilopascals that it was down in Boise. So if we calculate the saturation vapor pressure given this new temperature of minus 0.24 degrees Celsius, um, we can get um, our saturation vapor pressure. We can use that um, as the, um, the denominator in our relative humidity equation to get our relative humidity. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So here on the next page, um, is everything that we need to be able to uh, calculate this, um, the, the relative humidity of our parcel. Okay, so here's the info we need. Here's um, the actual vapor pressure. Here's the air temperature. Let's calculate first this um, saturation, saturation vapor pressure with the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Okay, so that is E sat. equal to 0 0.611 um, times the exponential of 17.3 times minus 0 0.24 okay over minus 0 0.24 plus 237 0.3 okay all right let's bring up our calculator okay let's clear it out all right so minus 0 0.24 um, times 17.3 is oh, clearly didn't do that right okay so 17.3 times 0 0.24 minus no This should be minus. Okay, 
So, all right. So yeah, so it's that is uh, minus 4.152 in the numerator, minus 4.152 in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we'll have uh, 237.3 uh, minus 0 0.24 is 237.06, 237.06, okay. And then the exponential of that, and all of that times 0.611, this is ESAT, okay. So bring up the calculator again. So, all right, uh, 4.152 negative divided by 237.06 is uh, minus 0.01 here. Okay, so we are going to exponentiate that. We get 0.98. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by 0.611, and we get uh, 0 0.60 on the nose. So ESAT equals 0 0.60 kPa. Okay, so there's our saturation vapor pressure. Okay, so now we know that this is 0 0.6. All right, so what is the relative humidity now? Okay, relative humidity is equal to, uh, using this equation again, so our E is 0 0.44 kPa. Our E sat is 0 0.60. KPA, and if we multiply that by 100%, that gives us our relative humidity. And, okay, clear that. So 0 0.44 divided by 0 0.6 uh, times, okay, so the relative humidity now of our parcel is about 73, uh, well, we'll round to that percent, okay. All right, so, um, okay, that, you know, so the important thing that we found here, right, is that um, by cooling that parcel, right, by bringing it along with us to Bogus Basin, um, that parcel, its humidity, um, its relative humidity went up. Well, why did its relative humidity go up? Again, we said we couldn't add or subtract water vapor from that Lexan box that we enclosed our air parcel in. So what happened? Well, we increased the relative humidity by decreasing the air temperature, right? So the net result of that is not that the amount of water went up in our parcel, it's that the ability of the air in that parcel to hold water actually went down because it cooled, okay? All right, so the next key question that we wanna ask ourselves is what if we had kept going up, right? So what if we had um, taken our air parcel and, and got on Deer Point um, or, or went and um, uh, got on Morning Scar, Morning Star skied off to War Eagle down to the bottom of Superior and took Superior to the top of Schaefer Butte, right? Um, that would have resulted in even more cooling of our air parcel, meaning that the, the ability of that air parcel um, to hold water vapor would have gone down even more, right? So what would have happened if we went up higher in elevation such that the parcel cooled to the point where this 
saturation vapor pressure um, either got to our value of the actual vapor pressure or even if we went further if our saturation vapor pressure went below our actual vapor pressure okay so that's um, the the sort of reflection or or further insight question that we want to ask is what would have happened if if we had taken that parcel even further with us and cooled it to the point where um, the air couldn't hold as much water was actually in uh, the air parcel when we left Boise with it.